up, he is a professor of glaciology at the Geological Survey of Denmark and Greenland, who Rolling Stone magazine called the Ice Maverick. Jason, Jason Box, Bond. welcome. Hi, Jason. Oh, hey. Hi. Thanks for meeting me yes. here. What's with the ice here? Well, this ice comes from Greenland, and this installation is you know, bringing the Arctic to Paris. And I think it's a very powerful communication tool because you know, it, it's more powerful than a thousand page report. And it tells us uh, in the shape of a clock, the ice is melting fast in the Arctic and also the Antarctic. And that's adding up to not only sea level rise, but changing ocean circulation in the North Atlantic that has immediate impacts on the weather and climate of Europe. So how do you know scientifically that this ice is going to melt at this rate? We have multiple independent lines of evidence that show an accelerating loss of ice from Greenland. Uh, various satellite techniques, but also surface-based techniques. So those have been reconciled, and there's no doubt that Greenland, Antarctica are, are contributing to an accelerating sea level rise. Is all of this related to our greenhouse gas emissions? Since the Industrial Revolution, humans have managed to elevate the greenhouse gases by more than 40%. And that has a very distinct warming effect. So we see this, this spike in temperatures that's been called the hockey stick. I'm very concerned because the, the ice will react to that, um, it is already reacting very sensitively in ways that's, that's been continuously surprising the science community. We're committed to about one meter of sea level rise by the end of this century, and we can't rule out significantly more than that. The IPCC report, last report, said that one meter was the the, the, the maximum our sea level could rise in this century. Is that right now? No, we've already passed by that. There's been a lot of science that's matured since then, and the IPCC document uh, has to be very conservative. It needs unanimous sig signatures across all the United Nations. And the science is telling us that uh, middle of the road is, is ab above one meter by end of century. Uh, we're actually locked in to one meter for sure by end of century, but going forward it gets much bigger beyond that. And what we can't rule out is multi-meters of sea level rise. Are you saying that one meter rise in sea level is committed? It's definitely going to happen, at yeah. least one meter. We just got that news. Just last month, NASA came out with a statement saying that we're committed to at least one meter of sea level rise. That means adding up all of the contributions from land ice around the world and thermal expansion. We cannot um, see any way that we're looking at less than one meter of sea level rise by end of century. And there are more immediate impacts. We don't have to wait till end of century when our children see this. It's um, when you combine a modest sea level rise with storm surge and high tide, that's when you get very expensive coastal inundation, flooding, uh, that's, that's already happening. We've got examples of that. And could it be a lot more than one meter? I mean, yeah. that's we can't, a definite. We, we can't rule out, you know, several meters. Uh, we're at 400 parts per million. The last time CO2 was that high in the atmosphere, global sea level was at least 13 meters higher. We can actually achieve 13 meters. That's what's coming. It's going to take um, centuries to realize 13 meters of sea level rise, but when you consider how old a city like Dublin is, or any coastal city that's been there, um, Shanghai, London, Hamburg, they've been there many centuries and so we have to look really beyond the end of this century if you're the mayor of, of some large coastal city it's your job to to think about the the, the well-being of that city and and that the threat that that sea level rise poses is is um, catastrophic for many cities and and so um, maybe it's not surprising that a lot of cities are, are signing on to um, mitigation agreements to to get um, emissions down and, and to, to keep this ice on Greenland and out of the oceans. So how quickly have we got to get off burning fossil fuel? We need to get off the burning of fossil fuels like yesterday. We, we're already overloaded. So somehow in the next century we need to get off fossil fuel and draw down atmospheric carbon below 350 parts per million. And can that be done? Can we bring down our greenhouse gas emissions to a level where we get the temperature controlled to? Yeah, absolutely. There's, there's a, a lot of economic opportunity in getting off of fossil fuel, and you have only to look at Tesla and the growth of, of solar uh, in California. Um, this is explosive growth, and it's disruptive in a good way. 
um, for those that embrace that next generation technology. If we ignore that, for those that ignore that, they'll just get left behind economically. So I, I don't think there's much choice for anyone who's thinking rationally about this to see the economic opportunity, to seize that opportunity, and that will give a lot of prosperity.